Hello everybody, this is Adam Kokesh. Welcome to Coronaphobia Day 8. This is now the new format for Adam vs. The Man, and we will be coming to you live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, seven days a week, at least until shit calms down. And we might reformat, we might go to five days a week, we might go to longer, depending on the production support, depending on what people want to see. Coming out of this mouth, into this camera onto your screen i miss the days when we had a three hour five day a week live show that was so much fun i know y'all enjoy that as well getting to callers and all of that oh wow my hands are still dirty from working on the rv today what do you know so right now we are at our friend alex place in uh, garland texas quality collision repair getting some work done on the rv so that hopefully we can be a little bit more comfortable and functional wherever it is that we end up bugging out for the next couple weeks going into a sort of voluntary isolation quarantine oh man a soft quarantine i really i don't want to feed into the fear i don't want to feed into uh you know the the the, the over hyping of this and all the things that are going on to make things worse um but for those of you who have been keeping up with us so far on social media you know that uh yesterday we were pretty confident that, that we had some form of corona, very mild form, uh, obviously, where I had funky little flu symptoms for about a day and a half, and Sam did for two or three days. I still had the lower back thing, but you know what? I'm starting to think that that was just from working out. You know, it, it really wasn't enough for me. One of the things we're, we're reading just now is another symptom that's coming out as a telltale sign uh, of this virus in particular is the uh, th that you lose your sense of smell and taste. I never had any of that. Sam, did you experience any of that? No. David, too. Um, but we decided, you know, after thinking that we weren't going to get tested because we didn't want to put a burden on the system and we didn't want to be on a list, uh, after weighing all the pros and cons and, and thinking, well, you know what, if, if we're going to be holing up at somebody else's place for a while, we at least want to know if we need to be strict about maintaining that physical distancing, not the social distancing. Um, but, hey, it looks like the guys here who are uh, fixing the slide are here to help us out. So we might have an interesting interruption in the production uh, going on now. Like I said, we are at Quality Collision Repair with No Force One, and we have a couple body issues that we want to get fixed along with the electrical issues. So if anybody is in this area wants to help us out, please let me know. But we do have someone coming out to help out with the electrical. And right now, really, we are uh, like we're we're good on uh, on food and water and toilet paper and uh, you know uh, medical supplies basic over-the-counter stuff not really worried about any of that but um, let's see I got now I gotta get distracted by what's are they all good baby they'll come back in an hour. oh they'll come back in an hour perfect look at that the show goes on so we decided finally that, that for all those reasons we were actually gonna go ahead and get tested here in uh, what are all those thumbs up coming from Wow well oh, there's a little delay here but anyway so um, it's a huge delay. All right. Hey, there's the delay on time. Thank you, David. So uh, we decided we wanted to get tested here and found out that we couldn't, uh, even in Dallas. And Dallas just went on lockdown where um, they are shutting down uh, nothing but uh, essential businesses, which includes vehicle repair facilities like the one we're at today. But, uh, you know, I... I I don't want to. I don't want to reveal any any private information and in some of the interactions that we've had. But I do want to talk about some of them because we met someone who we were doing business with, who uh, said that uh, their a family member had gotten something. They were 62 years old, and they got something that very distinctly looked like or like the stuff that makes what we're experiencing look like nothing. And by the way, this is one of the challenges with this and why I think the the prop, uh, propaganda around this is being engineered to create exactly these conditions of uncertainty and paranoia, right? You could be contagious for 30 days. You might have it and not show symptoms. It might be mild, but it might kill you. Like, whoa. And all of the misinformation, all of the uh, holding back of information, all the secrecy on this is real. That's what's scary. That's what's making things worse. Although I'm not particularly scared of the virus, I'm more afraid of the government response. And uh, so this is a tricky situation. All the uncertainty created by this 
is is creating this fear and inability to plan and, and that harm to the economy is is going to be disastrous and for a lot of people eventually they're going to be the the fear curve is going to decline the anger curve is going to go up people are going to be saying whoa 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 i gave up my small business my kids future my retirement for what and when the numbers come out and go uh, no, that wasn't an adequate excuse, and none of these things actually did any significant good. Wow, all right, people are going to be pissed, and I'm going to come back to that later on in the show today about how we capture that and, and grow the, the audience for these ideas and this whiplash effect. I'm going to get to the chart. We've got an updated version of the chart, not a, a perfect... Um, digital version yet if anybody when i come back to explaining this you someone in our audience i know who is much more talented than myself will come up with a proper digital version that that has all the little fancy fades and and text and everything in it maybe even some animations you'll you'll stay tuned i'm going to get to this explanation in just a little bit of everything what that chart represents the various curves that need to be flattened and yes of course the virus itself and um so our, our, our friend, this guy that we were doing business with here, uh, had no symptoms whatsoever and was still like, no, man, I don't want to get within 10 feet of you because I might have gotten it from someone else. And I was like, well, we might have gotten it from someone else. Like, I, we're, we're, you know, and he just, no, just wants to maintain that distance. Most of the people that we've dealt with here in, in Texas so far have been pretty nonchalant about it. And I think this goes to the uh, you know original messaging on this coming from trump himself of it being not a big deal flu like and being under control and again there's there there was uh something kind of inappropriate in what he said in that um you know downplaying it as simply flu like yeah it's but it's it's a bad flu at, at least i mean i think we can confidently say that and and that might mean that it kills three or four times as many people not 10 times as many not 34 times as many we know those things are blown way out of proportion and i want to give a shout out speaking of which putting the media sensationalism in perspective since i mentioned it yesterday our friend chad lemoyne part of our kitchen cabinet team team and the fed found this video and it was be like i was thinking of the ones from the hurricane where you see the reporter like in you know super garbed up in in storm gear and like like someone's pouring a bucket of water on their head and then you zoom out and there's like people walking by in shorts like it's no big deal um this was like an even better example of that he sent me from it was I think the Today Show, but anyways it's 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 like it's Matt Lauer right in studio and there's a reporter behind him or they, they they cut to in a canoe and you're and she's going well the city here is is totally and she's like fumbling the she doesn't know how to use a paddle like and. Uh, then the uh, she, 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 she's telling me this is basically an extension of the river now. And then as she's doing this, two people w like walk by and show that it's ankle deep water. And you're like, yeah, real like, are they lying? You know, they say it's a real shot. There's really a woman in a canoe. Technically, that little puddle there is connected to the river. But you see that and you go, whoa, and they imply this way more drastic scene than the reality is. And it's really easy to fall for that kind of hype. So if you, if you didn't catch that, I posted that everywhere. Um, I added a fourth social media platform to my primary uh, toolkit here. So as you, well, I guess if you count YouTube also, these videos are getting on YouTube. And in the next few days, once we get posted up and we overcome our logistical situation with the RV, we're going to be producing a lot more content. I've got a lot of footage to go through and post up. You're going to see that on Facebook and on YouTube and clips on, on Instagram and TikTok, um, Twitter, of course, as well as, as promotion. But those, those are, are, I guess, my five platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. So being able to put more time into all of those, once we get this RV and logistical situation out, we'll uh, figure it out and get posted up somewhere You know where we have reliable internet and electricity. We're gonna be able to bring uh, a lot more important content into the conversation here. So 
the other thing, you know, we, we, we've screwed up a couple things in, uh, in, in handling this. And I do want to uh, say that, that some of the people we've run into have been a little more sensitive and actually looked at our, our Twitter, looked at my Twitter feed and were like, oh, you were exposed. How dare you be in our business? And I was like, well, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't shake hands. I'm not, you know, but from now on, if we do go out in the next 14 days, bandanas. Yes, we'll do it like this. We can't get dust masks. Well, if we get, if we get home to to Arizona, if we get home to Freedom Farm, uh, I actually, I, it's funny. I didn't, I didn't even think about this until a couple of days ago, but I have uh, a pretty big pile of of dust masks that that I was using uh, for for doing cement work and, and other construction stuff. And so, now I see it looks like. I'm ready to rob a bank, right? People will be much more reassured when they see this guy coming into their business than, you know, this oh, yeah. guy. So, yeah, you're giving everybody warm fuzzies. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, but I hate, that's that's the new social norm, and it will be until we get past the next phase of this, and it's it's just really unfortunate. It like the cover of a 90s hip-hop CD. <laughs> Is that a... I'll take oh, that God. as a compliment. I thank, don't know. Thank you. You're, you're so good at wifing. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> bit of an extended inside joke there uh so that's our situation hopefully we're gonna get this uh electrical work done on the rv or figured out today uh we do have a spot that we are able to bug out to for tonight and at least post up might be able to stay there for the next couple weeks we'd like to get home we don't have the funds to get home right now and and we could what's that would very much like to get home. yeah sam wants to get home i'm i'm kind of torn because we don't have the best internet the thing is if we do if we went home with with the money that we have right now like we could pay for and gas is really cheap but right what mm -hmm. anybody seen what's what's the $1. latest 64 we saw dollar 64 here is that is that did you get that online or from from something we saw driving around yeah, that was where we passed by i, I don't even have a home yeah, and and of course our driver here, oh, who's who's uh who's who's a homeless drifter, here. yeah, who <laughs> um, home. doesn't have. But so so we could get home. Like I have enough money, just enough for gas now to get back to the Garden of Freedom in Arizona. But if we got there, uh, we wouldn't really be comfortable. We wouldn't be able to keep doing this. Our our generator right now is down. Uh, I have solar. I have a shipping container. We have places for water there. If we do go back and and post up uh, all the way back home in Arizona, um, we probably want to swing through Phoenix and pick up a trailer and a water tank, or uh, make sure that our our trailer gets. Oh, I loaned my trailer to my neighbors and haven't gotten it back yet. So, uh, but we, if we got out to my place, like I've got, uh, you know, I got a little SUV out there. Uh, we've got a trailer. We've got some 275 gallon water totes. We've got an outdoor shower. We've got an outhouse. We've got Clover could have his own home. This, or, or, you could live in the tire cave that I lived in, at the, and have your own building that's a, a, like in a way more comfortable than this RV because it's thermal mass. Yeah. I could decorate um, with all my tapestries. Yes, you could. All right. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 it would be nice if we could get home to the Garden of Freedom and, and maybe, uh, you know, next week we'll be doing these broadcasts from the rooftop kitchen, dining room area. And, and some of you have seen some of my videos from up there. Beautiful space, beautiful sunsets. It would certainly be the safest place uh, just not the most convenient and you know I think if we, if we had the money to get the right supplies out there it would be convenient enough and then uh, I don't know if, if that's how this goes you know anybody who chips in who wants to come and bring out supplies like that could be the bug out spot for people in the three major cities at least uh, at least a few dozen people we could we could find places for out there camping where you could be comfortable and part of a spontaneous community uh, and of course there would be some vetting involved I'm not inviting the whole public out to my place but uh, for our, our close friends at least people that we want to bug out with uh, from Phoenix and Las Vegas and Los Angeles maybe even San Diego just eight hours away from our place uh, if, if people could come out there that would that would be uh, that would be a nice possibility. You know, people could rent RVs, get them filled up, and we could be managing getting water and, and food in and out pretty easily out it's there. Nice. So, uh, if people feel like I, now, and this is the thing, I don't know. It's hard to get a sense from people in LA. If anybody is watching from uh, from any of the big cities in America, please comment. David here is watching the comments, right? Oh, yeah. um, and, and if if there are Sam is watching the comments, we've got a bunch of news stories we're going to get into today also. 
Uh, but if people can can tell us what things are like in those big cities, if it's getting scary, I've heard from some people overseas that things are getting hairy in, in, in different cities. Uh, I have a friend in Manila who texted me and was like, yeah, it's crazy here. They, you know, we have a, a, a better relationship with police in the United States than in some countries, not all countries. But what we've seen, one of the headlines today was that police are, are generally softening their approach in the uh, age of coronaphobia and trying not to arrest drug dealers. I love seeing these things rolled back in that sense because all the things and regulations, like the doctors from overseas can't practice in, in, in this country, um, that, hey, Ferdinand uh, Boholst watching from Manila. Look at that. And Thank I'm you very much for the Russia. comment. How about that? Um, so... We have, uh, you know, a situation where, okay, Scott Fly, I'm in Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Uh, Brian Smith is coming in from the Chai, Chicago. Things are crazy. Uh, well, please substantiate that. David, Sam, have you seen any more uh, specific reports about Guess things getting crazy? In Washington. Oh, so. No, no, like Marshall, like things that, so this is like, you know, what, what, what I think. I thought in, you were asking in, about comments. Yeah, yeah, but first, uh, in this conversation, I want to, I want to pe people to be able to have a, a sense of, uh, should we be scared if we're in a city right now? The LA homeless are in survival mode was one article I read. They're starting to steal food from grocery stores more than ever right now because they can't panhandle anymore. Uh, home invasions are going up right now yep. too. Home invasions, grocery mm. stores, closed business leagues uh, are starting to look. Especially, like, people that know that someone's, like, growing weed or whatever. You know, it's like... Don't tell people you're growing weed. Yeah, so I, I, I hate to see that, but it, it, it's a, a predictable consequence that uh, the homeless population in all the major cities getting squeezed out uh, in, a, in a variety of ways is going to lead to a serious increase in crime. Uh, that might be the bigger threat, and that might be the next wave that's coming with martial law. I hadn't really considered this until just now. But that if the homeless populations in major cities go on crime sprees, then you're going to see a lot of insecure people turning to the police, demanding more police action, demanding more of a shutdown, and that could make things kind of hairy. But uh, Scott Fly, pretty much every Starbucks in Southern California is closed. Uh, Michael Graves, Massachusetts, going into lockdown tomorrow. Tarek, Forrest, there's a spike in crime. How is that a, there's a spike? How is that a good thing? That's not a good thing. It's a, it's a terrible thing. No, um, did I su PD? Did I somehow misword that and say that that was a good no, thing? No, okay. LAPD has already told their police officers that they're pulling 12-hour shifts each now with less days off. So the cops are already going to be tense and tired as well. So that's another threat. Um, no. No. So if if the police are doing extra time, and this is might just be a factor that a lot of them have better access to testing than the rest of us. Yes. And um, they're going to get tested. And I've I've seen reports already that there are police uh, officers who have tested positive and had to just go. Sorry, we can't let you be a cop right now. You're going into quarantine for 14 days. And if that means that the other cops on the beat are going to be stressed and dealing with a, a more tense situation overall, if, of course, they don't have to enforce victimless crimes, that reduces the burden a lot. But if they're, you know, dealing with looters or small-scale riots or anything like that, that could get really hairy. And uh, that that's... So Stephen Powell says, the homeless are always in survival mode. Personal experience, don't believe the media. Yeah, Stephen, I, I, I get your point there, and I wouldn't dispute that, you know, having been desperate at times in my life myself. But no, this is different. This is like, sur like you never really were worried in America. I gotta say, I'm Speaking be proud of this. Speaking from experience as a homeless person myself, on and off, since I was five, this is completely different. Yeah, you never were worried about not being able to eat. Yeah, right. I mean, monster diving, uh, panhandling, food pantries, food banks that gave out things to people like myself, even when I was in high school. Um, this is different. Yeah, before this, if you were homeless, this it, is desperation. You, you weren't. The, the temptation to violence was and, and and to real crime was a lot lower than it is right now, and that's that's the scary possibility of, of what we might be seeing with the crime wave. So, uh, Robin Phillips, Central Florida is chill. South Florida, many incidents of COVID-19, but the residents of Palm Beach County and Broward are acting as if nothing is wrong. Business as usual. Well, that's great. Good for them. I'm glad that uh, that at least that's 
a one point of data point of normalcy there. All right, what else? Um, any other comments you guys have seen about situations in cities, people being afraid of martial law or violence, anything like that? Everybody's afraid of martial law. It's been a consistent issue, and that's keep, that keeps getting brought up in your comments as well as um, throughout all of the news articles. Uh, Trump activated the Federal National Guard to assist Washington, California, and New York Saturday. Yeah, now I'll, I'll say this point again because it's an important one. Uh, I, as, as a reasonable political position, that the fact that our U.S. military and National Guard units control a significant amount of medical resources shouldn't be the current situation, but because it is, uh, it's a good thing for the government to be activating them to make those medical resources available. But... Anything beyond that, and this is what we don't know, we don't trust anybody to give us the truth in government, is what security forces are going to be attached to those medical units, and what are they going to be tasked with doing, and is there going to be some real martial law crackdown? So, I don't know, the more I see this happening, oh, and our friend Quinn Aker is on the live stream today saying he called that, yes, there are a lot of people being separated out here in terms of who was looking ahead and, you know, I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm really I'm really happy to have been, you know, on the right side of this one, having called it uh, you know, a month before things got hot here in a podcast, you can go back and listen to that, the coronavirus hoax and of course, I'm not saying the virus itself is a hoax, but there's a huge hoax and fear-mongering scam around it, intended to consolidate wealth and power, so the rich keep getting rich richer and the poor keep getting poor and i gotta give credit to uh, john odermatt for a, a similar post that he made to the one that i just posted on facebook a little and and well a few other places uh right before starting this live stream in terms of what this is revealing if you look around the libertarian community right now but really society as a whole it's like there, there are three kinds of libertarians there are those who think the virus is a total they're category one people who think the virus is a, a total hoax and conspiracy and no real threat. Category two, libertarians who believe that this is the biggest threat we've ever faced, the virus itself. They have totally given into the fear and are freaking out and are supporting the government's actions right now in terms of cracking down and, and, and enforcing curfews and quarantines and things like that. And then category three, people who recognize that the virus is a real but relatively minor threat and the bigger threat is government and we need to be paying attention to that and we need to be fighting back and we need to be coming together as a community, as a, as a species as a whole, to really tamp down this unnecessary fear because it really is out of hand right now. So uh, Joshua McCoe's Anchorage is on hunker down order, no martial law yet or National Guard activated 32 cases in Alaska. Oh, I'm sorry, the last part of the post, really the punchline of that, is that people in categories one and two are basically discredited, and it, and it, it really is revealing. If you had a faulty worldview, overly conspiratorial or, or overly subservient and trusting of authority, it, 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 any of these extremes are being revealed by the current crisis, and we see people, you know, really discrediting themselves by, you know, pushing themselves into one of these categories. Um, this is going to be a very telling event, and I, I do want to share one idea from, from my friend Quinn, who I was speaking to earlier, trying to figure out this situation, and I'm really glad that he's a part of my conversation figuring this out. Uh, he said this is going to be bigger than 9-11, as an historical event, and I, I, from what it looks like right now, yeah, pretty much on on par with that even if we follow the best case scenario even if everything comes out well and we have a, a you know a pretty good cure soon this is going to be a global culture shifting event no question about that now he's saying it could be as big as world war ii now i i don't know about that i, I don't think it's big as 9 uh, 11 either but somewhere on that scale you can't oh, yeah. argue with that right, right, right. like but when someone says hey this is going to be bigger than 9 11 you go Oh yeah, shit. It's going to be You have to ask that question. Is it going to be big? It's going to be big. It's going to be on that scale big. The disease in 2020, you know, the, the year is easy to it's simple to remember, you know, uh, that 9/11 had that going for it as well, you know. Yeah. 
So, uh, any other thoughts or comments before I get to the chart now? I mean, like, I really haven't heard any good answers here. I mean, are people not afraid? If you're, if you live in a big city right now, are you afraid to stay in your home, or you are, are you, are you hunkering down because of martial law? Like, are you afraid that police interactions might get really ugly soon? That that if accountability for police goes away, that getting a, you know a traffic ticket, you you might end up as a dead body on the side of the road. I mean, if that's where this goes. I don't think it's, I'm, that's like, you know, worst case scenario. I don't think that's realistic. But there, I, I, we're probably going to see some incidents of that. You know, not maybe that, maybe not that scary. But uh, I think you're going to see in, in this time less accountability for police and people being more stressed out, police being overworked. And if we do see a larger crime wave, and, and I think it's already happening. I would, like I said yesterday, uh, actually two days ago, I think this is going to be one of the biggest underreported stories about what's happening right now. Uh, I think the, the this is one of the things the media is deliberately playing down in in order to not you know get people to think that government is incompetent. So, any any other comments on that, Sam? Um, I have one article here that I think you're going to really like. It's we offered aid to Iran. And Iran's supreme leader cited conspiracy theory that the virus was made by America and rejects aid, saying, possibly you're offered medicine as a way to spread the virus more. Or if you send therapists and doctors, maybe he wants to see the effect of the poison, since it is said that part of the virus was built for Iran. Our number one enemy is America. It is the most wicked, sinister enemy of Iran. Its leaders are terrorists, liars, and charlatans. I saw a post on Twitter, and I had to do my own version of this because it went viral, and I thought my own version would go viral, and it didn't. But it was, um, I wonder how libertarians are coping with seeing their ideology completely destroyed right now. And again, the statists have it completely backwards. This is absolute insanity to think that, oh yeah, government is doing such a good job. All of a sudden we see, yeah, facepalm, thank you, that, that all of a sudden we see that, that yeah, government is government is great in handling this. What? No, like this is, and this is how how does this not like we trust these people to to, to lead us to run these important institutions? How, like this is revealing the the, the 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 real vulnerability of our collective statist insanity. That these are the people we call the authorities. That they, they that we can't even share medical equipment between populations that happen to fall in different geographical areas around different false lines drawn on a map of the borders created by like just oh and now these borders what are they impediments to saving lives yeah just how do we how do we keep going anyway so I, I'm, I'm gonna get to the chart and then we're gonna get to uh, we're gonna get to all the other news and then and then back to some comments uh, David uh, well one more from David Demarest not scared but playing it safe and pa uh, pissed at category one and two folks but even more pissed at the government assholes exhibiting even more incompetence than conspiracy tendencies they are focused on uh, boats BOT what is that a typo for? Uh, but no, thank you, David, for that comment. No, I focus really focus on votes. Focus, focus on votes. Yeah, duh. Thank you, thank you, Sam. Um, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That like, if excuse me, if this is as bad as nine eleven or as big a deal as nine eleven, so to speak, and. It, it, you know, we all know that 9-11 was a conspiracy to one degree or another. Now, I'm not being crazy paranoid here, like, oh, yeah, let it happen on purpose, made it. But we know that the 9-11 the, 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 uh, commission report was full of shit, that there was a conspiracy to take advantage of it to, you know, go into the Middle East and the global war on terror. And see, if you think even that 9-11 was a completely natural organic event... And maybe the virus is a completely natural, organic event. There was a clear conspiracy to take advantage of it, to screw everybody else over, to create a war. Again, wealth and power concentrated in the hands of the few. So, for the for for this thing, uh, what David is pointing out here that's so important is that it's possible that the damage being done now by incompetence or and I don't think it's incompetence David I think it's the natural like I've said before I don't think there's a grand viral conspiracy here I don't think the virus was created as a bioweapon uh you know and, and and the government's accusing each other of that 
you know, I don't know, maybe we'll find out in a few years. Really doesn't matter. Um, but we don't, and, and we don't have a singular controlled central conspiracy to take advantage of this. I could be wrong. There might be a, a mastermind team behind all of this, but there doesn't have to be for us to see what we're seeing. There's already the big conspiracy of government, the biggest conspiracy in the world to take advantage of you, to rip you off, to violate your rights. No shit, right? And all of these elements within government see this opportunity and they go, all right, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And they kind of feed off of each other. I think the media, if, if you had to go through, you know, a sequence of events here, and again, I understand the people behind the media are the same people who pull the strings of government and the financial system, but it was really the media that was first responsible for blowing up the hype. And it was because of the hype that the government was able to come in and take advantage of it. And the corruption in the medical industry and all the tendency to hype in that, and that's corruption created by government, government restrictions, government regulations, corporatism. You have these three elements, the media, the medical industry, and the government that create this huge phenomenon that really is a bunch of people acting individually, independently in their own self-interest. You know, you see governors and, and, and county, you know, state governments, governors, county uh, supervisors, and, and, and mayors at city level deciding to do their own crackdown. It doesn't look like a coordinated response to me. Maybe I'm not being paranoid enough. Let me know in the comments. But first, I want to get back to the chart, the big important graphic here. And so for those of you who haven't seen it, what we have here is time and number of corona cases. First off, this is the, in blue, flatten the curve idea that if we don't practice social distancing, if and, and again, social distancing really should be physical distancing, good basic hygiene, stuff that most of us do anyway, which is why we don't really worry about getting sick too much. Uh, you know, taking care of yourself, sleeping well, eating right, basic stuff, exercising, which we haven't been able to do that much of lately because gyms are closed. Ah. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a meathead revolution coming up when this is over. But this is the idea, if we don't do anything to mitigate the rise in corona cases, is that it's going to go through more of a spike, a peaked curve, and that there's going to be this hypothetical line that we cross where the medical uh, industry in the United States hospitals are really just not able to keep up that even with the National Guard activating, deploying field hospitals, medics, medical uh, personnel across the board, uh, army doctors, all of those people coming in, that we're still, we still could have a spike in severe cases that could get us to this point. Now, a lot of this, I'm, I'm skeptical of this. So back to one of the stories we covered yesterday from Italy, where they had a, a really crazy sensationalist video. They, they look at all these patients. This isn't even the ER. This is, or this isn't an ICU. This is the ER. And they, they had what, like 16 patients and, and they had these, you know, these big plastic, you know, ventilator things over their heads. And there, there were, you know, they were all being treated and they showed clips of people in hallways. And, and we've seen a few photos of people lined up at test centers. Even that hype, I don't think has caused too much of an overwhelm. Like I said, here in, in Dallas, they're not testing anybody who's under 65, so we can't even get tested. And it's not because we're worried about ourselves. We want to get tested negative, if that's possible, to be able to put people at ease, to not have to, you know, go out as uh, banditos. As, as, as Trump would call the, the bad people from Mexico. But um, you can't even get tested now. It's crazy. So this, this idea, though, that there's this point that it's going to get overwhelmed, I think all of these statistics are really overblown. The point I wanted to make about the media, again, go look at the video if you haven't seen it on my Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and, uh, and Facebook. It's just it's something to keep in mind while watching the media coverage of coronavirus, the, the, the reporter in the canoe saying, oh my God, the flooding is crazy while two guys walk in front of her in ankle deep water. So the important part of this graphic here though is the green lines. And this is the other curve. And we have to flatten the curve of tyranny, the curve of martial law. And right now, so you see here, the virus is a phenomenon, creeps up. 
and then here comes the government response a little bit behind it or at least the inappropriate martial law crack down the uh, violation of civil liberties, the restrictions on businesses, the seizing of uh, industry for national control. And I don't think we're, we're that far along the line in terms of where it could go in light of this health crisis and that the government could use this as an excuse to go a lot further. So I would say here's where we are now, lockdowns, uh, business restrictions, things like this, still pretty bad. People feel a lot of pain. When we get all the way up here, if we don't flatten the curve, and I think we are, I don't think it's going to get to this point. I think a lot of people are paying attention to the government response. I've seen a lot of good stuff on social media that makes me think it's extremely unlikely to get to this point. This is more a, a, a severe, true martial law state where law enforcement has zero accountability. Obviously, they're trying that. We saw, and this is my pinned tweet right now, that the greatest threat to your health is the Department of Justice actually asking for the legal authority to suspend your constitutional rights, which would make law enforcement a whole other level of out of control. But this is that long-term lockdown. This is forced vaccinations. This is really worst, worst, worst case scenario. People getting forced to be tested, forced into isolation, possibly FEMA camp type scenarios, which is, yeah, Sam's kind of rolling her eyes, but it, it, it is a possibility. And I, I don't think it's a realistic one. I, I Honestly, if I said it's is it possible? Yeah, very, very low likelihood that we get all the way to this point. Now, here's the scary part about how the curve of martial law, the curve of tyranny, behaves differently from the viral curve here, which is a, a, a sort of more organic phenomena. It just kind of keeps going up and up and up. Once, once they've got people scared enough to ratchet up government, ratchet up power control, ratchet up the ripoff, it just kind of it, it follows more of a straight line rather than some natural curve. But that's not the scary part. The scary part is that when it levels off, governments don't take on power with the intention of willingly relinquishing it. So what we're going to see here, and you see that's a dotted line to show that a lot of time will have passed before we even get to start bringing government back under control. And when we do, it comes down in steps. You know, little fights, one at a time, and they're going to be hard. It's like, like, for example, the drug war. If you thought of this, this line as the uh, the curve of the drug war, maybe that's why it's green, right? It's, uh, subliminal messaging there. Um, that, that now we have, you know, maybe the first step was legalized cannabis, and then the the, the next step, uh, you know, or legalized CBD, and then medical, and then and then recreational. Well, in in the reality that we're facing, it's like, okay, no more f forced vaccinations. Okay, you, you can have a business again. Uh, okay, you can send your kids to school again. Okay, you don't, you know, like th these are these are big fights that are going to have to happen over a long period of time if we let it go this way. And I don't point this out to scare people, but to show you why I'm fighting right now, why I'm standing up, why it's so important to challenge martial laws, because if we let it get out of control, it's gonna get a lot worse and it's gonna be with us for a long time. Now, if you think about the area underneath these lines, right? Like here underneath the virus lines is the number of, uh, of total cases. The, the number or the, the, the space under these green lines represents a whole lot of human suffering. It represents a lot of people homeless who shouldn't have to be. It represents a lot of kids going hungry. It represents the destruction of a lot of small and medium-sized businesses. And this dotted line means these these steps are actually like way over here off the chart. And this big green line, if it gets to here, there's a lot of suck underneath it. But if we do this, now this is what I'm talking about here, uh, that th th we can flatten the curve. So here's here's our sort of hypothetical best case scenario. And I, I am seeing a hint of this possibility that the top headline on Drudge today was Donald Trump considers easing certain restrictions or social distancing requirements. I forget the exact language that, that, that Trump was using to describe that. But this is like, again, see here we have the, the if things keep going with with uh, with the virus, and here we have again a, this this little blue curve, this the, the little one there is a sort of best case scenario for the virus, as in we get a cure, uh, you know, and, and and we're already seeing that there are things that might be cures. The government is slowing down the implementation, which is just insane. Uh, and and I don't pretend to be an expert on this. Um, all I'm seeing is you know 
rumors, unconfirmed stuff. If it was more out there, we'd be seeing a lot more of it. But that uh, vitamin C, uh, high dosages of intravenous vitamin C, it was used in China. And, and by some accounts, that's why they don't have any new cases. They're not counting them as not. By the way, that's it, oh, it's so frustrating that you that this happens in China under communist Chinese government, where their government is a lot worse than ours here in the United States, and the secrecy is so much worse. Fucking insane that that they're, they they can't even count their cases. I mean, you might have seen there was a, a graph of the cases in, in in China, and there was a sudden spike because they started counting them differently. What the fuck? Really? Like you used to? Oh well, well now we're not counting you even if you test positive, if if if, if you uh, if you don't have symptoms. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. If you're tracking them separately, give us both numbers. You know, let us know the truth. But no, we we don't know that. But one of the reasons they might be seeing the le the, the the lowering of fatalities is that they're ex they're implementing these treatments. And here in the United States, we're not even talking about that. And it's really sad that we're not getting resources redistributed, redirected, actually rather, uh, to to those people who are able to. <clears throat> get those treatments out there. The other one, actually Trump mentioned chloroquine or, or whatever it was. There was some other malaria treatment. But that we don't have information is really sad that we can't even make these predictions about what's going on. So the best case scenario here is that, that we get some kind of cure in, in the next you know week or two and we're really able to put a, a you know damper on this thing and and in two weeks you know it's it's pretty much done that that's a possibility that's a best case scenario and if that's the case the martial law probably won't get much worse than it is right now because already people are getting pissed again there's this whole other the curve of anger and the curve of fear when they cross, interesting things are going to happen. And here's my general prediction is that the, the actual curve here is going to look something like this. That people are going to fight back, that we're going to see a lessening, that, that, that the uh, rate of acceleration of the martial law, of the lockdown, of the tyranny is going to level off a little bit. And if there is no movement to counter this, then what we're going to see is still, and again, the dotted lines representing passage of time and the steps of that tyranny getting scaled back, a lot of suck, a lot of human suffering under this curve going way out and then stepping down somewhere, you know, months, uh, and maybe even a couple of years into the future. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I think if we let it get to this point where, where I predict it's going, where there's just this kind of, uh, you know, lazy pushback of Americans complaining uh, of quality of life going down, of people writing their congressmen and senators, and, and nobody has any greater awakening than this is, it's, it's going to look something like this. But it doesn't have to be that way. And this is what I'm really passionate about, what I hope everybody who's joining me today and in this conversation is keeping an eye on, is that there is going to be a point when the anger exceeds the fear and people are really pissed off if we can get this message out there about the truth of what government is and how government made everything worse in this crisis then we are going to have a counter-reaction that is going to take us in a completely new direction towards freedom. That's the possibility here. That's what's really exciting. So when we get to this point, we have to be ready. Right now, we're somewhere near. Things are going to get a bit worse before they get better. They're not going to... I mean, I could be wrong. This, If they announce a cure tomorrow, it's going to look more like this. And things are... We're not going to have much of an opportunity. But this... This is where we bring back the end the Fed movement in a much bigger way. We say, look, we're gonna we're gonna crash the dollar. We're we're gonna be prepared. We're not gonna rely on central systems, and we're gonna question authority because the dollar here really. The, when you look at the tyranny, it's the Federal Reserve system. It's the ability. Yeah, okay. Stephen Whitener, hashtag pandemic. I've seen that a lot. And again, you you can't go too far with that. I do believe that there is a real minor, relatively minor medical crisis at the middle of this and or at the bottom of this. Now, how minor? How significant? Hard to say. Time will tell when we we are able to to see the true numbers and weigh them against uh, you know other things in in uh, in, in history. But that is uh, th this is the critical point right here. This is what we need to be watching for when things start to level off and the anger exceeds the fear. If we can get a positive message out 
show people who the real threat is, the real enemy, and we really learn the lessons from this. This is going to be an historical turning point beyond anything else. Now, Quinn Aker, I love that he's paying attention here and weighing in, and Quinn Akers is not paying enough attention. And that is exactly, thank you, Quinn, that puts your finger on what we need to do to get people's attention is that they're not paying attention right now. I mean, I got what s some somewhere uh, you know between seventy and a hundred people watching this live and a few thousand every day. Yeah, and I'm the most shadow banned channel on YouTube according to some. Yeah, we need help. I need you guys sharing these videos, getting people plugged in here. We're going to be doing this every day in order to grow this conversation. And maybe this is a movement. Maybe this is how we revive the end the Fed movement. Maybe this maybe this is a day of rallies where we say we are going to resist martial law and we're not going to put up with this shit any longer. And we're going to demand not that this government slowly step back, but that they release all prisoners in jail for victimless crimes, that they stop enforcing all victimless crime laws, that they re re remove all the regulations that they've had to remove on on the medical industry on doctors crossing uh, borders to practice all of those things all, getting rid of the dollar getting them out of our financial lives not depending on centralized systems getting people's attention with this this is the movement that we can make happen this is the potential revolution that could come out of this if we if we stand up if, if we go into warrior mode right now and say, yeah, we are going to stand up to this. We are going to do what it takes to get this message out. We are going to show real leadership. And when the time comes, we are going to be ready to hold mass demonstrations if that's what it hap if that's what it has to do or if that's what we have to do if to get to get this word out, to make this happen, to turn the tide entirely on tyranny. I hope that that this is the government going too far, that this is the historic and, and the bigger picture that's not covered in this graph, that this is the high watermark of government in human history uh, yeah meathead revolt mm, might be a little part of this but no this is the people recognizing what happened and what we need to change to make sure that it can never happen again and the Fed that might just be our rallying cry we'll see where this goes I hope you'll stay tuned and stay a part of these conversations a part of this discussion and and, and really help us develop this so that we can have some role and, and, you know, with or without me, I don't know if I'm going to be holed up in Arizona. Maybe it's the people in cities who are going to lead this. Maybe there's going to be a point where, uh, you know, the, the crackdown is localized and we're going to see different responses that are organic that none of us can control and, and just, uh, you know, be in a position to, um, to encourage and cheer on. So uh, any comments now before we get back to news stories? Sam, David? I think there's a huge lag in your phone because the comments that you're like repeating off happened like ten minutes ago. Oh, I know. I was I was actually because sometimes I'll I'll touch a comment on the screen with my finger you and and it'll. Put down the, um, the chart. <laughs> what's that? I oh okay so the, the there so we are working on a maybe yeah. thirty second lag here. But no, I was reading comments from way back just because I hadn't gotten to them and I wanted to see some of those. So. But any jump out at you that, that, that should be shared? Uh, Alicia Evans asks, what effect do you think this is going to have on voting when it comes to the primary election? Who? What effect is this going to have on voting with the primary? Well, so there are three. Young people are going to vote. <laughs> so there, there are three <laughs> relevant primaries that, that uh, I assume you're talking about here, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. Obviously, for the Republican, doesn't make a lick of difference. Trump had it locked up. Sad to say, Bill Well did not come over the hump to mount a real challenge to Trump in the primary. For the Democrats, similarly, it looks like Biden's got it locked up. Although there is, uh, you know, some increased hope in this among young Bernie Sanders supporters that uh, they they might have a way of of salvaging the nomination for him after all of this. I don't think that's possible. The other thing is the. Democrat and uh, Republican national conventions are not until August, as, as they are uh, every four years. And so there's going to be a significant time uh, passed in this where we're going to see the, the phenomena of the virus at least level out one way or another, and they're going to be able to host their conventions, I believe, in person. I mean, by August, was it March? End of March right now? Late March? Yeah, March. April, May, June, July, August, five months. From everything we've seen about the timing with this virus around the world, 
highly unlikely that the you know, lockdown on public gatherings is going to last five months. Could be wrong if they if they so effectively flatten the curve. I don't think they're going to be able to. And again, you know, back to the chart. There are some medical arguments against flattening the curve for her herd immunity that less people overall will be, you know, getting. I, I'm not going to weigh in on that part of the science here, but one of the incentives of government in this, I will point out, is that if they get to flatten the curve and flatten, more importantly, the perception of the curve, the fear curve, they get to keep the fear going longer and keep saying, look, new cases, look, someone just dropped dead to avoid large gatherings, stay in your homes, then they are going to be able to keep whatever, you know, uh, tyranny, martial law in place longer. They're going to be able to do more um, economic manipulation. So I think that's a, a very big thing to be watching. For the Libertarian nomination, that's a little trickier, and that's happening May 20 one to 25 in Austin, Texas, not too far from here. And that's just two months away. So again, this, this really has me leaning towards uh, bugging out to, to our place, to, to the Garden of Freedom in Arizona, and seeing if we can you know raise some money, scrape together some funds to make sure that, that our generator is working and that we have you know a good water system and propane and, and access to that. Although, you know, it's gonna be pretty easy if we have to just go into town once a week you know, from from our bug out spot in, into Ash Fork, Arizona. Excuse me, at least we can get propane and gas and, and, and basic supplies there to get water uh, and, and, and go to the dollar store. And then there's a, you know, there's a, um, we have two Safeways 40 minutes away. And so it is it is very nice and practical in those terms. So so we might be doing that if we decide that, that we need to get out there and be a little safer in terms of uh, avoiding law enforcement, avoiding martial law. If anybody wants to be a part of that, please send me an email or a direct message, especially if you are in Las Vegas or uh, LA or Phoenix and, and, you, and you're in the area and you can bring out some supplies or you want to help us out uh, or anybody who just wants to contribute funding to be able to have access to our bug out spot open to that too. Hey Charles Eakins I'm in Kai Bob Estates West one of our neighbors there just across the freeway it's the opposite side of I-40 I almost bought on the same side as Adam but this property is next to power so I can set up solar and maybe have it make me money, money while I'm not there. Well I'd rather be totally off grid but Charles I certainly appreciate that, and I uh, hope you'll be in touch if you hear us getting back to the neighborhood of Juniper Wood Ranch. Um, ask Adam and Sam's ass in Ash Fork, Arizona. Let's get Adam and Sam's ass <laughs> to Ash Fork, <laughs> Arizona. Uh, coming in, uh, Joey Lee, GI Mary Jane is coming in, load up with food. So if we if we do decide to to head uh, to head west, uh, we, we do have one other place here. In, in Texas that we're, we, we, we kind of have to be at tonight. So we're gonna be touching base there, but depending on how things go with the bigger situation, if we decide it's better to set up camp, uh, you know, further remotely, mainly for legal protections and, and, and just logistical safety, we might end up going all the way out there. Haven't fully decided yet. So we just got a few minutes left. Sam, uh, I know you wanted to cover an earthquake story. I did. So um, there have been like a mass string of earthquakes. 4.8 hit Northern California yesterday. Two more that were uh, about 4.3 magnitude in Ridgecrest Desert in California. 3.9 aftershock in Utah hit Salt Lake City. Seven earthquakes in Oklahoma in 24 hours, and a small one out here in Texas. Yeah, I've been hearing from friends in uh, in Salt Lake actually, yeah. where they're they're actually experiencing significant problems with the earthquakes. And uh, wish I had a more complete story. We'd we we'll interview someone there about yeah. how they're able to handle that in the midst of coronaphobia. Marcus Pulis, this apocalypse is boring. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's not an apocalypse. Apocalypse. It is, you know, um, it's a pandemic. It pandemic. Is, yeah, it is. It is a pandemic. Um, ow! You don't want to play footsies? I don't. Okay. Stop touching All my right. feet. <laughs> it's getting too cramped in here. Please get us home, everybody. Yeah, get it. Yeah, there, there's. <laughs> because I'm starting to want to punch him in the face. Yeah, and that's. It is kind of a weird thing being. You know, it was, when we're traveling in the RV, you know, we go to gyms, we go to state conventions, we go to political events, we host our own events. I can we go to the grocery store. We have people coming in and out. Yeah, we go get groceries. And now it's like the last the last few days, oh, 
We're kind of we're kind of like it's RVs and gas stations and 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 fast food and that's about it. I'm starting to not like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hey, I'm um, I'm looking at the shot here. I'm sorry, everybody. I got the, um, yeah, you know, I, I thought I thought we were gonna have our our little piece of wood cropped out of the shot today. No, but it's um, there. well, we can we can fix that. But I wanted to show people my T-shirt. I thought my T-shirt would be no. showing in this one. Scoot it back, all right. And craft supplies out. All right. Well, no, no. I just want to show people this is this is one of my favorite T-shirts now. Independent California from my original home, home state, from the Cal Exit movement. There, I got this T-shirt when I went and spoke at the California Independence Movement a few weeks ago. Had a lot of fun out there. So, um, next stories. Anything? Um, I have something really cool I want to share with everybody. I'm a total rocker. So I don't know how many of you guys like John Bon Jovi, but I love him. And who he... doesn't like John Bon Jovi? I don't. <laughs> off my bus! No, I'm not. Get no, I'm... off my house. It's okay so, if you don't like John Bon Jovi. So he found a fun way to pass the time. He recorded the first verse of a song that he named "Do What You Can," and he's asking everybody in quarantine to join in and finish the song with him. He said, "Tell me what you're going through." So come up with a lyric, and he'll look at the submissions and construct the tune to go with it. Cool. Where do people find that? Uh, on his website. So you can probably go on JohnBonJovi.com? I don't know. So you can There aren't a lot John of John Bon, bon Jovi's yeah. out there. So there's that, and I thought that was really cool. Um, something else was there's a new continent found. Geologists made a fantastic breakthrough, evidence of North Atlantic Creighton. It's an ancient continent adjacent to northeastern Canada was found. Hmm. Yeah. How we, about that? We have a new uh, continent. We, we have a new continent. We have like 200 new planets in the solar system, too, being yep. recognized outside of Pluto. Things you're missing because we're talking about coronaphobia. Yeah. Um, and that's not, well, I'm not talking about uh, Zealandia, which is recent seafloor drilling revealed the hidden continent uh, Zealandia, a region of continental crust twice the size of India submerged beneath the Southwest Pacific Ocean. So Audrey Baltzer writes, don't do eight tomorrow, Adam, take a day off. It will help. I don't know what that's about, but um, if it's eight, eight hours or what did I, did I make a reference to eight? something okay. no but the, i i want i gotta tell everybody we got a really packed schedule tonight really exciting stuff already in the works for uh our extra adam versus the man coronaphobia production i guess this is really more a, a kokesh for president production uh but over the next couple days i'm going to be doing one-on-one -on -one debates with most of the other libertarian party presidential candidates um and today i have how many lined up i have four oh, lined up for tonight sweetie she said don't do day eight Oh, don't do... Oh, I'm sorry. I misread that. Tomorrow. So Take it out. No! This is... this is looking exhausted. Oh. I'm exhausted. Yeah, but it's not from sitting and talking to people for an hour. Might as well share with you everything that's on our minds, because we're, we're just following the news and, and, and paying attention to this almost all day anyway. So... Um, no, day eight. This is this is fun. I like uh, I like being able to make this part of the daily routine. But no, tonight, I am debating Max Abramson, Arvin Vorha... Brian Ellison and Dan Berman really excited about this and then tomorrow we got Mark Whitney and then there are a few others coming up on the schedule this week these aren't gonna be live because what I'm doing with these we're gonna be doing Skype just pre-recorded simple and relax where you know we're gonna have a conversation and, and it's not gonna be uh, you know I, I, I like debates better when it's two people coming together saying hey you have this opinion I have this opinion we're both coming at this from an angle of how can we be right about this? How can we have the best answer to serve humanity? Let's talk. Let's let's compare notes and figure out. Maybe we'll disagree at the end, but at least we'll have a better understanding of each other. Maybe we'll modify our positions. Maybe one of us will, will change positions entirely. That seems like a way more productive, constructive way to have a debate. And so that's what I want because it's more intellectually productive and I understand when you're running for a libertarian presidential nomination that there is a uh, you know personality contest and popularity contest and, and that's when, when you have panel debates you know you, you get into a lot of that sort of personality posturing well I have to stand out as the this candidate or that candidate whereas I think in a one-on-one in -on -one conversation where two primary presidential candidates take different positions we can have a, a much more productive conversation so with that any other comments 
No. Oh, and, and Audrey also went in. Do it outside then, girl. <laughs> Change yeah. it up. Adam always did his broadcast from different spots. So do it outside the trailer. Uh, just a suggestion. I'm not trying to say you guys are doing anything wrong. We appreciate you. Love you guys. Aww. You are the bomb. Oh, thank She's you so much, so Audrey. Sweet. And Audrey is one, one of my friends from Arizona who uh, we might be seeing if, 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 we, if we end up going home this the week. comments keep me from so. going insane with your feet touching me. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. No, today's day seven, isn't it? I don't know. No, last month. No, today should be day eight. It's Monday. <coughs> yeah, I thought it was <coughs> day eight. Oh. I'm paying so much attention to the coronavirus, I can't even keep the day straight. The coronaphobia is consuming me. And sorry, I just want to make All one more point. Steak. What? You want a steak? All right. I just want to make one final point before, before I say uh, goodbye for the day. And that is that if you're experiencing some kind of minor symptoms... Odds are uh, it's best to, to just stay home and take care of yourself, to not go in and, and, and be paranoid. Because right now, anybody who gets a cold is going, oh, my God, it could be corona. Oh, I got the flu. Oh, my God, it could be corona. You're still way more likely to get something other than corona at this point. So, all right. With that, remember, flatten the curve of tyranny. Let's have an awakening moment. Let's make a revolution happen out of this. Share these videos, please. Bring more people into this conversation. Mwah. Peace and love, y'all.